Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice exponential equation. We have 2 to the power ln x equals x, and we're going to be solving for x values. So let's go ahead and use a method that is very common for log equations, especially when you have a variable in the exponent. And that is taking the log of both sides. Uh, I have the base 2 here, so I could probably take log base 2. But since I have ln x in the exponent, I could also use the natural log. So let's go ahead and natural log both sides. ln 2 to the power ln x equals ln x. Awesome. Now using properties of logs, we can go ahead and move this power to the front. And that just becomes a multiplier or a coefficient. So we can write it as ln x times ln 2 equals ln x. Awesome. This equation looks fairly simple. If you go ahead and cross out ln x, you know, you're going to get something very interesting like cross out ln x and you end up with 1, ln 2 equals 1. Hmm, that doesn't seem right because as far as we know, ln e is equal to 1 and we do know that ln e does not equal ln 2 because e does not equal 2, obviously. They're close, uh, sort of. So this is totally incorrect. So what is going on here? Well, we should not we should not be canceling out the ln x because that's actually going to give us the solution. So let's go ahead and fix this problem. The problem is canceling out something that is a variable. So when you have an equation, don't cancel out the variables because that is dangerous. So instead, let's do something else. Move the ln x to the front like before. Okay. Move the ln x to the front. And then go ahead and subtract ln2, ln x from both sides. So there's nothing wrong with subtracting, but there's something wrong with dividing and multiplying. Dividing can uh, cause you to lose some roots, and multiplying or squaring both sides can introduce extraneous solutions. Make sense? So here we have ln x as a common factor. So hopefully you see what I see. But here ln x is not multiplied by anything, so let's put a 1 there. And take out ln x, you get ln 2 minus 1 equals 0. So we have two factors here. Let's set each one equal to 0. ln x equals 0 and ln 2 minus 1 equals 0. This implies ln 2 equals 1, but we do know that this is totally incorrect and false and wrong, whatever. So we're going to go with the other case, which is ln x equals 0. And what is that supposed to mean? It just means if you do e to the power of both sides, they're going to realize, hey, e to the power ln x is equal to 1. But what is e to the power ln x? It's equal to x. Great. So this gives us x equals 1. And that seems to be the only real solution. Let's go ahead and check our work. The original problem, and we always have to use the original equation if we're checking our work, not the modified version. So we have a 2 to the power ln x equals x. If x is equal to 1, we get 2 to the power ln 1, which is 2 to the power 0, which is 1. And if x is 1, then you get 1. So they are equal. So we're good. Okay, awesome. So x equals 1 seems to be the only real solution, and it works. Now, when I said the only real solution, is there a complex solution to this equation? Right? That's something to think about. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this from a functional standpoint. Obviously, in this case, we arrived at the answer directly, but sometimes you must use guess and check because uh, not all equations are nice like this one. And I'll show you some uh, examples later on uh, that look uh, similar to this problem, but harder. So, uh, how do we kind of look at it from a functional standpoint? So, suppose you have y equals 2 to the power ln x, or let's call it f of x. f of x equals 2 to the power ln x. So, think about this function. What kind of function is this? Is this increasing? Is this decreasing? Is it what? Uh, concave up, concave down. How can you tell, right? So, when you differentiate f, you get 2 to the power ln x. That's a to the power a kind of like a function u, and when you differentiate it, you get the the whole thing itself multiplied by ln a, which is the base, so we have kind of have to fix the base, because if it's e, then we're good, but otherwise we have to adjust, 
and then multiply by u prime. This is called the derivative of the inside or the chain rule. So by that rule, we have ln2 multiplied by ln x. The derivative of ln x is 1 over x. So we can basically write f prime as 2 to the power ln x times ln2 divided by x. And what happens with this? Um, well, this is going to be kind of like an exponential function. This is like a polynomial or linear. Obviously, we're going to get, oh, by the way, uh, for x positive values of x, this is going to be positive because 2 to the power anything is positive so this is always positive but what if x is negative well that can't be happening because we have to think about the domain of this function and the domain tells us that x must be greater than zero that is dictated by the domain so for x uh, for all values of x that are in the domain the f prime is positive which means our function is always increasing how can you find the concavity? And is concavity important? Sometimes. If you take the second derivative, you're going to realize that it's less than zero because it just brings up a negative factor when you differentiate it, not too hard. You just differentiate this and that, kind of like a quotient rule, but multiply by a constant, so on and so forth. Uh, but that just means that our function is concave down. Now, why did I say all of these things? Because I want you to be able to look at this function, not just from a solving the equation standpoint, but also from a graphical uh, standpoint, which is important because sometimes uh, we want to prove that there are no other solutions and so on and so forth. And in this case, we have an increasing function that is defined for positive numbers only. It's concave down and y equals x. So what is that supposed to mean? We are going to have a uh, y equals x is the horizontal line, but our function is only going to be in the first quadrant, and it's going to be concave down. So obviously, it could also be like this, but that's not the case. You're going to see when I show you the graph, it's going to make more sense. Okay, so we basically uh, log both sides. So is there another alternative? Like instead of logging both sides, can we do something else? Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at an alternative approach. So we can also do the following. We can go ahead and use substitution. For example, suppose ln x is equal to, oh, did I say zero? Sorry. If ln x is equal to u, then from here we get, um, well, the base is e here. Remember the definition? e to the power u equals x by using the definition of logs. So we can go ahead and substitute this. We get 2 to the power u equals x, which is e to the power u. Wow, that is interesting, right? Is, is, that, is this possible at all? Now think about it. Uh, 2 and e are different bases, so there's no way they're going to be equal unless the exponents are 0 because 2 to the power 0 is the same thing as e to the power 0 because they're both equal to 1. This implies u equals 0 is the only possibility, and if u is equal to 0, u is ln x, which means x is equal to 1. Make sense? Okay, great. So x equals 1 is the only solution, and we also verified with substitution. Let's go ahead and take a look at the graph, and we'll finish up. The graph of y equals ln x, I mean 2 to the power ln x, as you can see, increasing and concave down, the green one, right? And then y equals x is the diagonal. They intersect at, they seem to intersect at two points, but 0 is not in the domain. Now, Desmos doesn't show that, so I had to include an open dot here at 0, comma 0. But x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. In the real world, is there a complex solution? Please let me know. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.